What's up, everybody? Today I'm telling you guys a story about greed, riches, sadness, all surrounded around $12,000 worth of gold found in a Baltimore basement in 1934. 14-year-old Theodore Jones and 15-year-old Henry Grob formed a boys club one day. They both put a nickel, which was the dues, into a cigar box and decided to bury the box in the basement for safekeeping. One began to dig a big hole along the back wall, about a foot down. They heard a thump. They kept digging to uncover a corroded gallon-sized can, which after being struck with an axe, uncovered a massive hoard of gold coins. The boys reportedly surrendered the coins to the Baltimore Police Department. Shortly thereafter, a Baltimore gold rush took place, with many people calling in trying to actually claim the gold for their own self and saying they put the gold there. Isn't that insane? They tried to do the right thing and people just immediately flooded saying that it was theirs. On September 2nd, 1935, the Jones family apartment where a portion of the massive hoard was kept, was robbed. $3,600 worth of gold was taken from the apartment. The boys explained that this was part of their discovery made in the cellar in 1934. They used the rest of their money in lawsuits after this, aimed at rectifying the losses and the robbery. Up until 1938, which was the last lawsuit that they had actually filed for just things to be right, they just had to basically go through a lot of legal proceedings to get their gold back from the government. One of the major wrongs that the city basically did was they hired a uh, antiquity dealer by the name of Perry Fuller. And uh, this guy basically damaged many of the coins using what was said to be a butter knife to pry apart some of the coins. Damaging many that very well would have been $20,000 or $10,000 coins single-handedly. It was said many of the coins would have been graded uncirculated if just processed properly. And if a skillful cataloger would have been comp like they would have compensated for the quality of the coins by emphasizing the hoard's history and where it was found in a basement by a 14-year-old kid and the romance of it basically you know like the hit the real history behind the 3500 coins but Perry Fuller decided to divide the 3500 coins up into 438 different lots of coins further diminishing the entire finds value because if you take a find that is that big and you divide it all up and make them 438 separate lots. Now, those lots aren't even handled properly, yet the grading wasn't handled properly, so nothing was handled properly in this uh, in this case where the boys actually just gave the coins to the city and thought that everything would be good. It was said that the first lot at auction contained coronet double eagles, and each of them were sold for $36 at auction. <laughs> The entire auction of 3,500 coins brought less than $20,000. Fuller declared bankruptcy in 1935. His career ended by the decisions that he made with that find. And uh, yeah, his entire business basically just went into shambles after that because nobody wanted to uh, use him for anything after that, apparently. And this brings our story to an end. A story of riches, hope, sadness greed, happiness, the full circle, honestly. Full circle in this endless cycle of the American machine. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and like the video. It really helps tremendously. It really helps tremendously. You guys have no idea how much a like goes uh, farther in my hopes of furthering this channel. And uh, yeah, I've been really trying to uh, bring a lot more entertainment in these videos and you know, do my do my due diligence to do the research and everything to actually get all the details. And I'm trying to organize it in a way where everybody can enjoy it. So I really hope everybody has a great rest of their day. I'll see you soon, y'all.